enjoy doing a lot, playing music for God, worshiping God with the gift of music. Um, you know, it's fun playing all those uh, fast guitar riffs. You know, just knowing that I'm doing it, doing it for God. So it's, 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 it really is a lot of fun. Um, but this morning, what I would actually like to talk about is um, a gift that God has really been bringing out in me more recently, and that's the gift of teaching. And for some of you who've been here for a while, you've kind of, you know, probably uh, uh, seen me doing that some. Um, and so that's just really something that um, I guess it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly, uh, you know, when God started me on that journey of really developing this gift of teaching, but it's something that I've just really felt more recently that he's been uh, uh, bringing me to. Um, and for me, you know, as I think about the, the gift of teaching for myself, there's been a couple of other disciplines that go along with that, and that's studying and also examining. You know, in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21, Paul said to test everything and then to hold fast to what is good. So for me, I believe that my, my gift, and really the, the desire that I have within me, is to study and to test and to examine things to, uh, deeply, and then to, to find ways to, to share those insights with others. And ultimately, I'm not just share, I, don't, I don't just want to share these insights with people just so they can have more facts inside of their head, but what I believe is that what you believe affects the way that you live. Um, and so what I want to do is to, to help people in what they believe and help them to, to believe the right things and help them to believe things that will change their lives. And so, um, like I said, this is kind of just a desire that I've, I've felt within me, that I believe is from God. Now, ultimately, the, the ultimate desire is, is really just to love God and to know Him for each and every one of us. Now, of course, that's going to manifest itself in different ways, but that ultimate desire is to love God and to know Him. And for me, as I think about that, for me, an essential <laughs> aspect of loving God is loving Him with all of your mind. That's what Jesus Himself said, uh, to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so for me, I have a desire to love God and to know God with my mind as deeply as possible. And I've actually had a, a similar relationship with music. <laughs> For me, I couldn't just listen to music. I had to play it. And it wasn't really enough to just play music. I actually had to, to understand deeply how it works. And actually, my journey with God has been similar. For me, I couldn't just hear from others what they believed about God, what they believed about the Word of God. I had to read the Word for myself and to seek to understand deeply what it was saying. So I believe that God has given me and that God continues to increase in me a desire to love Him deeply with all of my mind, to know Him deeply with all of my mind, really to just allow His truth to saturate my entire being. And for me, as I think about it, I just believe that the things of God are way too important for us to stay on a surface level. So for me, I desire to go as deeply as possible with God. And I think it's uh, just important to, to say here that this desire that I have, you know, I don't believe that, or this gift that I have, I don't believe that it's just for my benefit, you know. It's not for me just to have fun and to, you know, enjoy. Ultimately, my desire to love and know God, it, it's not for me, it's for the benefit of others. It's to serve others. Every gift that God gives His people is, is for the exhortation of others, for the building up of others, for their encouragement, to, to, to help them in their time of need. And so for me, I spend hours reading and studying and writing and preparing, and I really do enjoy doing that. You know, I, I, I enjoy every last minute of doing it, and I really benefit from it. But really, I do it because I want to help others to go deeper. If I just do that and I'm not able to help anybody else, that's a waste of time, personally, in, in my opinion. Um, what I really want is to help others to love God and to know God with all of their mind. I want to help others to be saturated with the truth of God. And once again, I just believe that the things of God are way too important. And I want to help others to get off that surface level and to go deeper. And I just want to share a little story, um, an example of how I believe that this, that this gift of teaching and, and the, kind of my preparation and the things that God has done in my life have, has allowed me to, to help somebody. Um, the other day, uh, Dave and I were doing some juvenile prison ministry. 
um, and we were with a, a group of girls. And this one girl, we were just singing some songs, and she just she just kind of started crying. That, that happens every once in a while. Um, but then after we were done playing, we kind of started talking to them. We liked them to ask questions, and just we just liked to talk to them and, and see where they're at and stuff. And as we were talking, it just became obvious that a lot of really horrible, horrible stuff had happened to this young lady. She was in a lot of pain, just crying and crying, in a lot of pain. And then what made it worse was, was I could tell, is that she actually blamed God for everything that had happened in her life. And really, because she blamed God, she didn't want to believe in God at all. But Dave and I were actually able to talk to her, and we were able to tell her that it wasn't God's fault that all those things had happened to her. We told her that, that God didn't want her to be hurt, that God didn't want her to be abused. We told her that God loves her, and that God desires to heal those who are hurt and abused. Because that's exactly what Jesus did. Amen. Jesus is the great physician, the great healer. And also, God wants to bring good out of the hurt and abuse that really inevitably happens to all of us in some way in this fallen world. Now, really, I mean, I don't know if I'll ever see this girl again. I don't know how much telling her this um, affected her. But really, I just believe that a significant barrier was removed to her believing in God. Amen. And personally, I don't, I don't know if she would have ever believed in God if she had continued to believe that it was all God's fault that she had experienced these many horrible and painful things in her life. I'm really glad that I had some kind of answer for her. Amen. I'm really glad that I've, I've studied and I've thought about this issue and I was able to serve this young lady with that. You know, in, in answer to those kind of questions, people have all kinds of different answers. Is God to blame? Some say yes. Is God to blame? Some say no. I needed to find out for myself. <laughs> and I studied it, and personally, I, I came to the conclusion, is God to blame? No. For me, the number one thing that tells me that is Jesus Christ. Throughout his ministry, he constantly came upon sick people, abused people, hurt people. Never once did he say, God did that to you. Almost every time, he usually says something like, the devil did this to you. You know, you're, you're, you're a bondage to Satan. And then he healed them. And so that was my desire to, to try and give this young lady a different picture of God. A picture of God that looks like Jesus. A picture of God as a healer. A picture of God as a Savior. And not as someone who would want to hurt her or abuse her. Amen. And so... Uh, that's just one, one of many kind of stories where I feel like God has been able to use me. Amen. And as George says, uh, George said, God uses what we have, not what we don't have. Amen. And for me, I think I've just always had a desire just, just to know things for myself, to read things for myself, to study things for myself. And so, so as I've given myself more and more over to God, He's, he's been using that yes. so that I can come to know Him, and then I can come to help others to Amen. know Him better. That's right. And so, uh, for me... I kind of just feel like my journey has just begun. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my gifts uh, definitely still need to be developed. And I believe that developing our gifts, like everything else in the Christian life, that's something we do on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, and for me personally, some of the things that, that I've been doing to try and develop my gifts, one of the things I've been doing is just seeking out people who I feel like can help me, mentors in some way or another. Um, you know, you can have living mentors, dead mentors, people in this room, people who are thousands of miles away. There's, there's, just so many, there's just so many great people out there who I feel like can help us, whatever gift we may have. Um, and, and then there are also just so many resources, uh, for me, available in helping me develop my gift. Really, especially with the internet. There's books, there's blogs, there's articles, there's podcasts, there's YouTube, there's... You know, we have online Bibles, online Bible commentaries. Um, and for me, I just seek out the best resources that I can find so that I can learn and grow. Um, and I'm sure there's, there's other resources. You know, I'm talking about resources for my gift, but I'm sure there's all kinds of other resources for other gifts that people may have. Um, and another thing for me is that I believe that, uh, that education for me is an important thing when it comes to developing my gifts. Uh, kind of the things I was mentioning before, those are kind of like, I guess, uh, being educated by other people in our lives or being educated, kind of self-education. Um, but for me, I'm actually going to a seminary right now, pursuing a degree, pursuing a degree.
degree there. And thus far, it has been immensely helpful in me helping to develop my gifts for God. And I'm looking forward to, to how that's going to continue to help me, um, to, to grow and then to be able to help others and to serve them. And one last thing that, uh, that I've also been using to develop my gifts is just seeking opportunities and experiences to use my gifts to serve others. Um, you know, I kind of started off, I guess, using this teaching gift in the, the juvenile prison ministry that, that we do. And that was just such a, such a great opportunity to just have that available. Just any time I wanted to, I could go in there and teach a little lesson to the kids. Um, and it's definitely been a growing process. Um, but it's been great. And um, opportunities here at the church have been amazing just to be able to teach and share and encourage people. And really, I, I look forward to even more opportunities and more experience both inside the church and outside the church. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to maybe other ways that, that God will want to use me. Uh, because I just I just have this, this desire in my heart, this gift. I want, I want to, to, to study and to know Him more, and I just want to help others in whatever way that I can. Um, and so for me, that's kind of uh, where I feel like God is leading me, God has led me thus far, and I'm uh, looking forward to what else He might be up to in my life. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. Our identity too often is in our success. It should be in Him, but often we place our identity in our success. So He can turn success into failure in a heartbeat. You know, the CEO who dedicates his life to God and teaches Sunday school for children